So this. Or this. What would you prefer? Are you considering a motorhome? Let's discuss two awesome powerful classes of motorhomes, Super C's and Class A diesel pushers. To do this, we bring in a special guest to detail the difference. Let's get into it. Talking about diesel pushers, Class A's, and Super C's. And we did see some at the Tampa show. Uh, we didn't really get enough time to do that. So, so we actually came to an RV dealership here and they're supposed to send some sales guy out to kind of help us. We've been waiting for him for a little while. So Hello. I, I, I'm sorry, uh, we're all out of salespeople, but can I help you guys today? Are you the sales guy that they... <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> can you imagine that? I mean, we asked for a sales guy and they send super sales guy out. Super sales guy. Oh, here, no, so. no. Welcome to General RV of Ocala. <laughs> If you guys don't know who this is, because you must, this is Matt from Matt's RV Review. <laughs> Very famous for what he does. And so we we're fortunate enough for, for them to assign him to these newbies and uh, help us and help you guys sort through if you want a diesel pusher or a Super C. We want to thank Matt from Matt's RV Reviews for taking the time to spend with us to highlight some of the major differences between Super C's and diesel pushers. We hope you enjoy this video. So we, as first time uh, RVers, we purchased a fifth wheel. Okay. And um, that was uh, kind of the way we kind of started. Why don't you come up here, babe? And uh, we started with a fifth wheel, and uh, but she started, she wanted a drivable. And our decision was, let's kind of start with something. We don't know if we're going to like this lifestyle. Yep. But every time we see a diesel pusher, or every time we see a Super C, it's... Uh, ba -ding, ba -ding. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So there's definitely a lot of differences between like a fifth wheel and a motorhome. Mm -hmm. One, motorhomes are just awesome by themselves. Right. And then a question that I get all the time, that's why when you emailed me, I, I jumped on the opportunity. People do want to know the differences between a Class A diesel and a Super C. Yeah. You know, so right now what we're in, we're in a uh, 2023 Fleetwood Discovery LXE. This is model... 40M. <laughs> is it 40M? See, Matt's a smart, really smart sales guy because we talked about it at lunch. Uh, about doing that, you know, looking at the right fluids, the and he brought us right to a Fleetwood 40M. It is a 40M, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so Class A diesels, they they call them diesel pushers, right? Because you're you're on a Freightliner chassis or a Spartan chassis, and the engines are normally in the rear. Very rarely is it a they call them Freds front diesels, but so they're diesel pushers. And the reason why a lot of customers like this when you compare it to a Class A gas motorhome or compare it to a Super C is you're not sitting on top of your engine. Right. It's a lot quieter up front. It's air ride suspension. So it feels like a cloud when you're driving down the road. And you can get some beefy chassis with some big horsepowers. Mm -hmm. Horsepowers in um, all diesels, they'll, they'll start as low as 300 horsepower for the entry level small ones and go all the way up to 605 horsepower. Okay. And that's where it tops out at. Very, very large. So I think, I think certainly when you look at kind of the target audience, for people, we find at least what we think is that target audience for uh, uh, a diesel push and probably a little more comfort, a little better ride. Yes. Uh, Super C, I think towability probably. Correct. I mean, I think you can tow more up to 20,000 pounds. Depending on the Super C. Depending on a Super C and probably 10 to 15,000. On a on a super, on a diesel pusher, depending upon which one, of course. Anywhere, I mean, there's some that like the and more entry level ones. I mean, you're really only, only safe at like five thousand pounds. Wow. Okay. Um. So that that pulls up a great point. There's two big reasons why I would buy a Super C over a Class A diesel. The first reason one is towability. Right. You know, when you're in the cockpit of a Super C. You know, that's badass and awesome. Right. You're in an international or freight line or something like that. And you're able to tow 10, 15, 20,000 pounds comfortably. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, lockout, lockout. Another advantage to why somebody would want a Super C over the Class A is because when you're sitting in this cockpit area, it's very big and intimidating, and it's not as safe as a Super, Super C. C. Correct. Don't get me wrong. It's still safe, but this is just a, a motorhome, right. whereas the Super C is going to be your actual truck chassis. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So so that's the the safety aspect is huge to the Super C for some people. With you, you have the engine compartment protecting you as opposed to being, you know, just uh, exposed like that. Correct. With that said, me personally, I would never buy the motorhome based off of that one decision. Sure. There's always multiple decisions when it comes to getting an RV. So some of the advantages to the Class A diesel pusher is these seats in this area is a part of the living area. We're in a 40 foot class A, it's going to feel a lot bigger than a 40 foot super C. Um, not only that, I don't understand why, but I feel like the slide out rooms are bigger in a, in a, in a class A diesel pusher over the super C. I don't know if that's an engineering thing, um, but it just always seems like you're able to get bigger, deeper slide outs, more livability and then the pass-through storage underneath so once you get up to these higher end diesels they're made on what's called an xcr for raised rail or an xcm like this discovery is which is a modular chassis which that's what's able to give you that incredible pass-through storage with the slide out trays whereas with a super seat you're not getting that sure yeah and i think to your point we've seen some super seats where i think you're right when you look at kind of this view from here you see how wide open it is and those chairs can turn around and that's a great thing because those chairs can become part of the living area in a super seat it, it all you know it kind of seems closed off yep. you have the, the slides are over here you still have the the i guess the driver's yeah, compartment is quite a bit less your seat less just because those those seats can turn but they actually don't they're not they don't feel like they're part of the, the living area so um, let's talk about, because we have the woman's touch here, let's talk about creature comforts in diesel pushers versus super seats. Yeah, so are you talking about like the core selection? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so two things. One, um, there is a lot more class A diesel pushers than super seats, probably 10 to one, truthfully. Wow. Wow. And so with that, you're going to get different aesthetics. Um, with that said, if we were to generalize, and it's never good to generalize, but we are going to generalize, a Class A diesel pusher is always going to be like this, a lot more beautiful. I mean, we're talking Tiffins, Newmars, Integra coaches, Fleetwoods, American coaches. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're absolutely beautiful. And because the competition's so fierce, they have to one-up each other on interior look and decor, and they're more modern, yeah. right? Whereas, generally, a Super C isn't primarily focused on that. They're focused more on the towing and the chassis. The chassis and the towing is more a uh, priority than the beautiful looks. Now, don't get me wrong. Somebody's commenting, oh, they're getting... <laughs> Man, I have a blah, 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 and it's absolutely beautiful. Great. But, again, just taking it with a grain of salt, Super Cs aren't are not normally as aesthetically pleasing on the inside as class a yeah, motor definitely homes. Seen that for sure. yeah. yeah we we actually did see that so we went to the tampa show and i think we got a little bit of uh, footage on this that uh you know we feel like the super c's are sort of more more designed for younger people and i think we could all agree that some of the diesel pushers in the past looked a little bit dated looked a little bit old maybe like my grandmother's house maybe not somebody else's but it just looked a little dated and then and the new super c's Except for the new Mars Superstar, I believe. It just haven't really come across with kind of new... With you, new, lighter and brighter yeah. colors. Yeah, and if you see the, the light... And this is a beautiful Fleetwood 40M. And if you see the, the, the... It's beautiful here. It's light and bright, and you have enough balance. So that's that's great. So uh, we covered safety, which is good. I wanted to cover that. I wanted to cover the towability. What about storage? How do you feel like storage is... is... Yeah, perfect. And that, and that was actually what I was going to get into next. It's like floor plans and livabilities. You know what I'm saying? So like here, we're in a 40M. So first, staying within a certain price point, like like you mentioned Newmar Superstar, that's a lot of money. And that's when you can get a big 45-foot super seat. But if we're talking like this price point and under, people are looking at like 37, 38-foots that are built on the S2 RV chassis, which is more 
practical for most people watching this. You know, when you get to the superstars or like that uh, renegade that's like really big, really that looks like a, the explorer or whatever. The explorer. Right. Yeah. Once you're into that level, obviously you're going to get nice stuff. But keeping the price reasonable, you're going to get a lot beautiful living area. The opposing sofas and something like this. And this is a, yeah, this is a lot of space. It is. Solid surface countertops in the kitchen area. Induction cooktop with a dishwasher. You know, uh, a lot of people like to compare this to the Athlete 37M, which is a very similar floor plan. A little bit smaller kitchen, a little less featured, um, and you only have one bath instead of bath and a half. You know, when you're in this one, if you lift that up, you're going to see oh, yeah. that it's beautiful with induction. Not only that, when you get to uh, certain levels of diesel pushers, uh, it's they've been eliminating propane, so you're running completely electric. <laughs> What's that? Full sink. Oh, Sign yeah. Provided sink. Very nice. Love that. I mean, you got tons of pantry space in here, residential appliances. Um, again, dishwasher, stackable washer dryer, a lot of features that you're going to absolutely love. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So we talked about, and we and we do want to go look at a Super C as well and uh, kind of give you some, you know, again, in all fairness, and, and we love Super C's, by the way. Yeah. We, we love diesel pushers. We love our fifth wheel. But it's really a question of what's right for you, right? And what, what you know, what attracts you to that particular, uh, uh, you know, type. Again, towability, maybe it's safety, maybe it's something else. Livability, are you living full-time in it? Are you traveling a lot? I yep. think that, that makes a difference in in, in, the, in those kinds of things. So um, dishwasher is interesting. I don't, I don't think I've seen a Super C with a dishwasher. Right? Um, Not all of them. Maybe the new Mark. But. Yeah. And again, then you're, you know, at, at a complete different level with right. that. But there's one other thing that the Class A diesel pusher has a huge advantage of, and it's their bathroom size. Oh, Master oh bathroom. this is fantastic. Small back. Obviously, this is beautiful, but this is where it's special. Yeah, the bathroom is so neat. I mean, this is your shower. This is fan wow. freaking fantastic here. Yeah, that that's amazing. Yep, you got a nice porcelain here. You got a seat, nice glass door. Yeah, I think what we've seen in most of the Super Seas is, uh, with the exception maybe the new Tiffin, is that quarter round uh, shower, which it might be fine. Yeah, definitely uh, this is very, very nice. So uh, in all fairness, we should cover a Super C, and we need to go take a look at that and just see what people uh, think about that as well. But we like the 40M. It's a nice, it's very nice. It's kind of a perfect size for two people. I don't know. What do you think? I got to do one more thing. Okay. I got to sit on the toilet. <laughs> well, first. Let's see. First. Oh. Uh -huh. Give a plug. Oh, liquefy. This video is not sponsored by Matt's Liquefied. However, it's a great black tank enzyme to use to dissolve all that stuff. Anyway, there's a link below where you can purchase it on Amazon. Oh, look, it just happened. It's Wait, hang on a second. Do we, do we get, if we buy the 40M today. Yeah. I know you talk about getting the best price and everything, which I, I believe you would. But if I get one of these things, deal's done. I mean, the deal's done. Well, what you don't know is this is a $350,000 bottle of Liquify, <laughs> but it comes with a free discovery. So, bada bing, bada boom. God, that's marketing. Go to primepoopposition.com to pick up a bottle. But let me uh, sit on the toilet. Okay, we got to get that. This is something else that you're going to get in the Class A. You got porcelain. You got tons of space in here. Again, the, fl the, the floor plan or the format or... The foundation, that's what I'm thinking is, they're able to just make them a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, a little bit spacer, spacier. Oh, this is huge. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And you know what this is? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> right, but, 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 but you're not you're not shopping for this. I am. So let, oh, me, man. Let, let me give it a shot. Here. We got you covered. Let's see if I can get comfortable here. Get Kind of get settled in. Feels pretty good. Bing! Prime oh. proofing position. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, no doubt. All, All right. right. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the Super C. Let's go do it. drive a Super C. I don't know that I would drive a Class A. What do you think as far as drivability? 
Well, a lot of people do have that feeling that driving a Super C would be easier than a Class A. So, um, do you mind if I take over the camera? No, absolutely not. Go sit, hop in the driver's seat. Oh, there we go. So, one of the big disadvantages, and this one isn't too bad, is the climbing in and out of the cockpit area. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's definitely not as easy as just slipping into a Class A. But how do you feel? I'd rather hear your opinion about how you feel sitting in this. I actually feel like... I wouldn't be intimidated to drive it. Number one, because it's much like our truck, but obviously much bigger. Um, unlike the, the Class A, where I have to learn how to drive differently because of the whole location of the you know wheels versus the steering wheel kind yep. of thing. So. so my two cents on the matter is I would never buy a Super C over the Class A for the drivability of it. Um, you know. The Class A is, in my opinion, more intimidating, a little bit bigger, but they're both, I, it's not worth sacrificing the living space and the creature comforts only because you do feel a little bit more comfortable here. Because what I always like to tell people is, when you leave the dealership down to the gas station, it is the scariest quarter mile of your life. Yeah, sure. <laughs> By the time you make that first turn at the gas station, you're like, oh, I got this. You know what I'm saying? So yes, right off the bat, the first mile of driving, a Super C is easier to drive. But after you put five, 10 miles on any RV, they do become a lot easier to drive. Yeah. Now with that said, we have to drive these to the RV shows. I do get to RV shows faster in a Super C because I am more comfortable and I'm going 80 miles an hour cruising down the highway. With that said, you know, you get used to driving the Class A like a bus and um, they both drive extremely well. Yeah. Okay. So what would yeah. you choose? Well, I would still probably prefer the Class A. And this is why men will never fully understand women. <laughs> well, no, truthfully. And this is what's so hard about RVs because everything's a compromise. In one minute it's a Super C, then it's a, then it's a Class A. Well, if you take a step back and we look at this, um, we're in a Thor Pasadena 38 MX, which is only two feet shorter than the exactly but this i mean it, it's cut off it's boxed in it's a little darker it's definitely not part of the living room arrangements and again even though this unit only does have one slide out you can definitely tell that this does not feel homey you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, like no. we were talking off camera i personally would buy a super c as a weekender or even a even a even just as a regular rver because I think they're badass in America. <laughs> but if we if we use the F word yeah. full time, <laughs> uh, I, I would only be full timing in a class A diesel pusher or a fifth wheel, you know, but again, that's a different conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great information. So we talked about creature comforts. We talked about dishwashers. We talked about washer dryers, lady type things, Matt. But um, let's talk about guy stuff. Hell yeah. <laughs> America. Let's talk about chassis and let's yeah. talk about engine choices. Nice. So, uh, when we do you mind if we go outside for this? Let's go Sorry. outside. So, with Super C's, there is different levels and styles of Super C's. So, as we're right here in our little Super C area, you can see that some Super C's can be on the Chevy 5500 or 6500 chassis, and that truly is more like driving a pickup truck. And then you have these Nexus Super C's, which are more entry level Super C's, and they sit on the International MV chassis, and they're only like 300 horsepower. And then where you get into more of like, quote, the real Super C's, as Izzy and MJ would call it, uh, that's when you get to the Thor Pasadena and like the Integra Accolades and Jayco Seneca. That's when you sit on the Custom Freightliner chassis this is the S2 RV chassis, 360 horsepower Cummins engine, 800 pound feet of torque. You're not getting the awesome raised rail or modular chassis, but you still get a decent amount of chassis, of uh, storage, I mean. Now, there's a big difference between an S2 RV chassis and an M2 RV chassis. My opinion for most RVers, an M2 is overkill, but not for everybody. So the S2 slanted a little bit more, it's a little bit smaller, and it's better for your average camper. 
Now, if you are the guy that's towing 15, 20,000 pounds and like you're hitting that number, then you are gonna wanna upgrade to the M2 RV chassis. And that's stuff that we don't even sell here at General RV. Um, like you gotta look at like the Renegades and um, the Dynamax and stuff like that. That's when you get to that next, next, next level of Super C. I think you actually have uh, in some of them too, you have the M2106, which is truly a Freightliner chassis for like kind of mid uh, entry, uh, not mid entry, but kind of like sort of regional delivery. Then you have the Cascadia freight, which is the cross country stuff. And that's going to be like the Gotti Quest XL. That's going to be like a superstar. And that's what you're talking big, big, big bucks. It's really a cross country machine. So, uh, but definitely more price point, price point, and with some creature comforts as well. So, uh, one of the things that's really cool about the Super C, and some of you may know that, is the ability to service. So, the ability to service, because the engine is right here. Then, I don't know if Matt, if you can do that on this one or not, it looks yeah. like it's pretty easy to do. So, the engine's in the front like you'd normally expect. So if you are a wrench turner and you're somebody that's fairly handy with stuff, then this is gonna be a little bit easier for you to change things like air filters, stuff like that. Now, one of the disadvantages is the noise. You're sitting on top of the engine, so definitely not as quiet as the best. So, let me try that again. One of the big disadvantages is the noise. You know, you're sitting on top of this engine, and again, in the Class A diesel, the engine's in the rear. To each their own. I actually think it's kind of badass in America, yep. but um, you know, everybody's a little different. Yeah, I think I think for the, those of you that sort of like to hear the engine, not so much because you like the roar of the engine, but you like to know what's going on with your engine, uh, then I think a Super C does make a lot of sense because you definitely hear it. You hear the downshift, you hear those kinds of things. And some people like that. I, you know, I enjoy listening to the engine of our diesel truck. When I had a gas truck, I, I enjoyed listening to the engine because you kind of feel a little bit more in tune with the vehicle itself and the motor itself and what it's doing. So uh, I think there's a benefit to that. But what we found with, uh, with you know, any kind of an RV purchase, it's everything's a compromise and you have to really kind of prioritize the things that's important to you how often you travel, the comf creature comfort that you want. Do you want a camp or glamp? Um, and how, you know how often you move because I think that make, makes a, makes a difference. So, uh, Matt, we appreciate. Thank this. you. And if you had any parting words for anybody that's looking, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, then you you knocked it right on the head. It's all about compromises, and e so one a lot of compromise has to do with engineering. Like, how can they be built? A lot of people are like, well, why don't they do it like this? Well. It's not that they haven't thought of it, it's just sometimes it can't be built that way. And so let's say you're looking for the RV that has this, 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 and this, and you're not willing to compromise, and I get that, I wouldn't either, but where the compromise does come is if your budget's 400,000, to get this, 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 and this, you're gonna be at 600,000. So now you still have to compromise, do you raise your budget or not? You know what I'm saying? So. Again, what, what you'll hear me a lot say on the show, it's all about the perfect combination of quality and price. I'll make it extremely easy for everybody who's watching. I don't care what the brand is. I don't care if it's Thor, Integra, Numar, Jayco, Winnebago. The $800,000 MSRP is always built better than the $600,000 MSRP one. The question is, it doesn't mean you should buy the $800,000 one or the $400,000 one or whatever. The, it's not about which one's better. The 800, an American tradition is better than a Fleetwood Discovery LXE, period. Mm -hmm. But we sell more Discovery LXEs than American traditions. It's, it's not about which one's better. It's about which one checks off the most amount of boxes while keeping it price point effective for you. Right. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, we all realize what, what do we do this for? And it's kind of like buying that house that's too expensive. You can be house rich, but money poor. And I think RVs are the same thing. If you want, if you're going to travel a lot and spend a lot of money on your travel expenses and camping and things, well, you know, maybe having the most expensive one, unless you've got, you know, more money than you know what to do with, may not be the best option because you are going to run into expenses. You're going to be maintenance things. There's going to be things you're going to want to do in your camp and that are going to cost money and you have to make sure you, you allow enough in the budget uh, for that. So let's finish this video with the same qu question we asked in the beginning of the video. Super C or diesel pusher? What would you guys choose? Let us know what your preference is.
We again want to thank Matt for Matt's RV reviews. His YouTube channel is full of tons of reviews and very, very helpful information. We also want to thank General RV of Ocala. Thanks for your hospitality and letting us put together this video on your location.